with us back to Hebrews. We're going to finish this your little, little bit up tonight. I was thinking about this today, and uh, we have, you know, how many people and how many babies has went out into eternity? Jane and I have talked about this, and I don't know how many of you, but I want to ask you something tonight, and I want you to think real hard about it. America has killed and aborted a generation. We've aborted an entire generation. And where we've read here in the Word of God, we've been talking about the greatness of salvation. And salvation is, folks, for them that have died without God. Those little fellows that have been aborted, they're in glory. They're in glory. But the ones that took their life, they're going to stand before God. And if they never got saved now, if they've never been saved and never turned it around, was in a meeting, and I know I may have told you this, over at, uh, in Mount Uri at White Plains Baptist Church. I can't even remember the pastor's name. He's been dead for several years now. A little 16-year-old girl, she got up and walked down the aisle and she got saved that night. I'd I'd never been there before. Me and uh, Paul Gentry went over there. I was pastoring down next to Elkin. And uh, they they was having revival. Brother Mays Jackson was over there. And... This young lady, she told about she could lay in her bedroom of a night in the back side of the house, back part of the house. And uh, to make a long story short, I'll make it as short as I can, said she'd lay there of a night and she aborted her little baby. She had a baby and she buried it out behind the woodshed out there. And said she could hear it crying, Mommy, why did you do it? Now I'm talking about a 16-year-old girl. Said she'd lay in there and she'd hear it all night, every night. Why did, Mommy, why did you do it? Why did you do it? And she said, tonight, she said, Mommy, I'll never see you again. I was sitting right there. Everywhere it was, I don't remember where she's sitting in the White Plains Church. And uh, it's over toward Mount Uri's where the church was at. And uh, way off uh, over there, he had a big, he still, I reckon he had ever, they've got a, a, a radio program. And, but anyway, she got up, she came to the altar that night, and she got saved. And she got saved. And you know, she stood up and she said, tonight's the first night in almost two years since my little baby asked me, Mama, uh, told me I'd never, I'll never see you again, Mommy. Why did you do it? I'll never see you again. But she said, tonight, she said, my little baby said, Mommy, we'll be together after a while. Amen. And she said, the little voice, The little voice left me. The little voice. And said, now I can stand before you. And the house was packed. The house was packed. And she said, tonight, Mommy, I'll see you again. Good night. And she said, I I think I'll have peace now because I'm going where my little baby's at. I'm going, I don't remember where she said it's a boy or a girl. I can't tell you that. But God can give you that kind of peace. God can give you that kind of assurance. 
And I can't remember. She said she's still 16. She might have been 18 then. But it had been years, maybe a couple of years, since she'd had peace, could sleep all night. But the thing about it, how great salvation is. I'm talking about the peace of God and the peace with God. There's a big difference, folks. There's a big difference between the two. And as we start tonight, I want to start, I want to go back and to only had three, three captions of this as we look at it. But in Hebrews, in chapter 2, verse 3, just one verse of Scripture there, and the Word of God tells us very plain, very plain and very, very, I mean, it's, it's so real when you really think about it, but it, it said here, if I find it, chapter 2 and verse 3, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him, Heavenly Father? Honor Your Word, and I know You will. Speak to us through it tonight. Open our hearts to the will of God. Bless Brother Fred, bless Brother, all of these requests tonight. God, upon every heart, God be with Betty Jo, God be with Sue, God be with all of his sisters. God, I pray tonight that you would speak the peace of God, you would speak conviction. God, you would open their hearts to the word of God. Help them, Lord, to see one way, one God, one heaven, one hell. And God, I pray tonight, God, they'll miss hell, and God, heaven will be their home. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, as we begin to look, I believe we got down to the latter part of the first uh, uh, part of this. And I want to begin here in, uh, in uh, Ephesians in chapter thir- uh, 1 and verse 13. And as we look at this tonight, we're talking about so greater salvation. And as we begin to look at this, and think about this, uh, we think about in Ephesians and uh, chapter 1 and verse number 13, and, and we may have covered this before, but I believe it's worth reading again. And it says here, he said, and In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, you were sealed to, uh, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, I want us to understand now what this is about tonight as we're going to hurry through this and cover every bit of it tonight if God uh, uh, will help us through it. It gives the believer the God's seal. Now, we are sealed till the day that you appear before God Almighty. You are sealed. And then God's going to break that seal. It's just like I've said many times. I've said it uh, in many funerals that I've stood in that God alone has a right to all of those people's, their bodies out there, the ones that have died in the Lord. God alone has a right to them. No one, you know, people say, well, I remember he did this, he did that, or he didn't do that, he didn't do that, this, or he didn't do that. Hey, God's judgment is coming. God's judgment is coming. God don't need your help. And God don't need my help. God don't need you lifting them up or putting them down. They've lived their life. Brother Fred said a moment ago, he said he was 72 years old. God promised us in here, he said, uh, three score and ten, that's 70 years. He said, if God allows you to live beyond that, then God will bless you. You're on borrowed time. You're on God's time clock. And God will bless you to live beyond that. Boy, just give God glory. I told my wife coming to church tonight, Jennifer sent us a little old picture of uh, Jack's. I mean, that little old fella, he is, uh, boy, he loves vegetables. Buddy, that's all he wants, all he wants to eat. He's got a grin on his face. Boy, it's unreal. I'll tell you what, if he turns out to be a vegetarian, I don't know what I'm going to do with him. And I'll tell you right now, I'll send him over to Michael's house. I'll let them, I'll put a fence around them, let them graze in the same pasture. But, but the thing about it is, that youngin has got a smile on his face, James. I mean, I don't believe Clorox could wash it off. 
And, uh, but the thing about it, that's what a child of God ought to be. We ought to walk around and we ought to be happy all the time. Why? Because God said you're sealed with the seal of promise. God has given us a seal. People say, well, and I had a fellow the other day. I was witnessing to him. He said, well, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Preacher Dean. He said, uh, uh, I'm, I've known him for a long time. He said, if I come up, or he said, I've got to get saved again. He said, that's all there are to it. Now, he said, I need to get saved again. And I called him a name and I said, I'm going to tell you this. If you was ever saved, you're saved. But I said, I'm going to tell you something. And you're going to get mad at me, but that's all right. You'll get over it. I said, we'll go out and eat a hamburger and drink a Coca-Cola together and you'll feel better. If you don't, I'll give you a roll of Tums and that'll straighten you out. But I said, you probably, more than likely, you wasn't saved to start with. You just went up, done, went through the motions. And if you got the real thing, you'd know it. If you really got saved, you would know it. Because you don't get saved but one time. You get saved, brother, you're going to know it. There's a difference in your life. Not only that, but the thing about it is, and because of the freedom of its condition, the salvation, the freedom of the condition of the seal of God. You've got freedom in the Holy Spirit of God. Brother, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, Brother, I mean, I could, uh, I can go to the ABC store and buy all the liquor I want. But I'll tell you, I don't want none of it. And brother, I tell you what, I'd rather go put my head down in a good old country branch, brother. And I hope I don't suck up a spring lizard. But if I do, then I got some protein with it. But the thing about it is, but despite its cost, it's offered to every one of us with that price without any money. You can't buy it. You can't do a thing with it. In verse, uh, in Isaiah, in chapter number, listen to this, in chapter number 55, and the thing we've got it, verse 1 and 2, what does the Word of God say? It says, Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come, unto the, come ye to the waters that, get, that hath no money, come ye buy and eat, come, yea, come, buy wine, milk without money, and without price. And that, that word wine, it don't mean to get drunk. That means to be happy. Brother, that word there in the Hebrew, happy, happy. Brother, we come to church, look like we lost our last dollar on the lottery. If you play the lottery, God have mercy on you. Come on up here and get saved. Brother, I'll tell you right now, brother, gambling ain't no part of this book. Brother, but think verse number two. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in its fatness. Brother, delight in the Lord. When you come in the house of God, be happy. I mean, that's what we're to do. Brother, we're to come to church and be happy. Brother, listen, on my worst day, I don't want the devil to know I'm having a bad day. I don't want, I want to take my foot as big as it is and kick him right where he needs to be put. Brother, what I am talking about, I, you give, a, the reason a devil rides a lot of people, they put a saddle on their back and he just sits there. And he just sits there. Because the Word of God tells us right there, you labor for that that satisfieth not. Brother, these people that go out here and you gamble and you gamble and you gamble and you gamble, your money's gone, but the people that's got it, are sad. They, they ain't satisfied. They want more of your money. The people that out here playing the lottery is the ones that don't have the money to start with. They're robbing their little children of a loaf of bread and a pound of bologna and a jar of mayonnaise. House rent. Got no place to live. Got no cover on them in the winter time. The oil barrel's empty. Why don't they fill it up in the summertime? Why ain't the wood pile packed up in the summertime? Well, it's hot. I don't want to get out there and sweat. They're too blame sorry. 
Everybody wants a paycheck, but nobody don't want to work for it. All right, but listen to this. The thing about it is that uh, what we need, despite the cost it's offered without money, without price, it's free. Right here's the best deal anybody can ever have, and all you got to do is come and get it. All right, but the thing about, what about Revelation 2.17? Let's turn over our just a minute. I, 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 can, I just want to, I want to look at that. The last chapter 22, verse number 17. Look what it says. And the Spirit and the bride say come. The Holy Spirit of God. Now I'm talking about the last altar call. Michael, preacher, Get your notes out. Here's a message. The last altar call in the Word of God. The Spirit, listen. What does it say? And the Spirit and the bride say come. What are you? Huh? Everybody's ashamed to say it. Brother, hallelujah to God, I'm a bride. I ain't much, but I'm a bride. All right, but the thing about it is, he said, and let him that heareth say come. How many can hear? God said say come. On Sunday morning, they ain't even a holy grunt except, it's, it's boy, dear God, the beans are gonna burn. The Methodist gonna beat the Baptist to the chicken house. That right there, everybody's got their mind on scat. Well, so and so spoke to be at the house 15 out of 12. I've asked people to come to church. Well, what time do you let them out? <clears throat> what I ought to say, lot, lot, I, I, what I ought to do is put a gate just outside them doors one morning and lock it. And when they open them doors, just let them hit the gate. <laughs> oh, Lord God, they'd all go through the window and leave and never come back. <laughs> the, the thing about it is, look what it said. Let, let me read. The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is the thirst come, we, we're not hungry for the Word of God. We have lost a thirst for the Word of God. We have lost a hunger to be fed, but boy, we want to get to the smokehouse. We want to get to where we can be fed. And anymore, you can't go nowhere to be fed outside of your home, and I hope you don't have it, that unless there's alcohol in the, in the, in the cafe. No, anywhere you go. You have, you, you've got to buy groceries. And God said, don't even look upon it when it moves itself in, its, in the bottle, in itself, in the fermenting stage. But you'd have to walk around with blinders on in the day that we're living. But the thing about it is, he said, let him that is the thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Let him take of the word of God freely. You gotta hear the word of God. The word of God has got to draw you down here. The Holy Ghost of God has got to draw you. The last altar call, you're gonna hear it one day. You, a lot of people think they're saved, they want, to, they want to stay and say they're saved, but they have never been to the altar of God and never been saved. But they're members of this church. I said members. I didn't say souls that had the greatest salvation. Salvation and membership, salvation and righteous, I mean, and uh, self-righteousness Brother, that don't get you to heaven. The thing about you can be as self-righteous as you want to be and it's stuck up if it rains and you know so far back that you drowned. Brother, but the thing about it is it takes the blood of the Lamb of God. You've got to believe 
in the water, in the washing of the word of God. And brother, you don't have to be baptized to go to heaven. That is an outward expression of an inward possession. The thief on the cross was never baptized, but God took him to heaven. A lot of people get saved on their deathbed. Led a man to God one night, 93 years old, went out his driveway, and as I went down the driveway, it was hot in the summer, he slept upstairs, slept with his overalls on. Oldest man ever led to God. God ever give me the privilege to. And brothers, I went down the road, he had raised that window up there, uh, praising God and giving, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. And boy, I could hear him all the way down her driveway. It was her daddy. Buddy, I'll tell you right now, you talk about a blessing. What about Betty Joe's husband, Joe Blevins? Buddy, I'll tell you right, he's laying over here in the hospital. Betty, I mean, uh, Joe, he, wasn't a, he didn't go to church, never did. Got in intensive care, buddy. God got his attention. Go get Dean. I went in there, boy, and I'll tell you right now, uh, old Joe got, got a hold of God. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, God may have to bring you. Uh, and it wasn't many days uh, to Fred's brother-in-law was gone out. Uh, brother, he's gone. Uh, but I believe anybody in this world ever meant to glory, I believe Joe Blevins did. Uh, uh, brother, I believe he went and pulled that sheet of glory down. Uh, and brother, I believe that old boy got saved. Uh, and brother, if there's ever a man, it was your daddy. Brother, I'll tell you what. He, boy, old brother Joe loved God. Brother, that's another Joe. But anyway, getting up back on the subject, uh, the thing about it, the invitation is to all mankind from all walks of life. It don't matter where you're from. It matters where you're going. Where are you going tonight? Do you know for sure? All right, number two. Number two, why do people neglect it? This is going to be a short one. Why do they neglect it? Why do you think they neglect salvation? Why do they? Number one, because iniquity and the love of sin and its pleasures. That's why they do. Let's look in John chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 19. Now the thing about this thing, it's, it's real. It's real. And it's, it's real and it's forever. Chapter 3 and verse number 19. And what does he say? And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and to, uh, into the world and men love darkness rather than life because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds shall be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God or they are wrapped up in God. All right, why does a man, why, why don't, uh, why do they neglect it? They don't want people to know how dirty and rotten they really are. That is the very reason you don't confess to me, you don't confess to no man, you come to an altar and you bring it to God. Brother, listen, man can't do nothing for you but take, they can take from you and rob and steal and put you down, but God can save your soul and lift you up. If people would get a hold of that and people would really really and truly grab a hold of the greatness and the love of salvation. Because he said right here plainly, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than life because their deeds were evil. The thing about it was, think about Noah building the ark. They just laughed at him and laughed at him, laughed at him, put him down, put him down, run him down. Boy, it's a different story when the rains came. Whole different story. Here, if you can't save me, save me onions. Can't save me, save me onions. God don't work that way. God will save them that come unto Him. 
through the Son. They got to come through the Son. You got to come through the blood. You come through the washing of the Word. You come through the Holy Spirit of God and come through the blood. All right, not only that, why do they neglect it? It's because of ignorance. Ignorance. All right, you say, now wait a minute, a lot of people don't understand it. Let me tell you, go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, and listen to what the Word of God tells us. Uh, you know, there anything you want to know, this book will straighten you out on. It, it'll help you if you will let it help you. But you know this book, but a lot of people don't want to, they don't want to help, they don't want help. In Proverbs in chapter 14 and verse number 12, the, it's, it's, this book is so real. I've, I've got so many markers in here. I've lost my place and don't even know where I'm at. But the thing about it is this. All right. Now, chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He thinks he can buy his way out. People think they can con their way into heaven. You ain't going to do it. The way, he said right here, and I look what Solomon's credited for writing this. He said, there is a way. There is a way now. Why do they neglect, I'm talking now, why do they neglect salvation? He says, because there is a way which seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What are we talking about? I'm talking about the Episcopalians. I'm talking about the Catholics. I'm talking about these that, I'm talking about the Mormons. Clanting their three little, five little, six little, seven little rows of cane. Making, how I many jars of molasses that they can have. And all in sale and how much money they can bring in. Boys, I mean, you need to understand this stuff. This, you... We are in a capsule in America today. Ain't that the truth, Jake? The Baptist church wants the preacher, wants the Sunday school teacher to come in and tell them what they need to know. Right here is everything you need to know. Everything you need to know, it says the Word of God will stand for proof and reproof. You don't have to have this book and that book and this book and that book and this one right here and Google this and Google that and Google that. I don't have no Googler. I got the Word of God. And brother, I got a set of knees that'll bend. Yes. I wish they'd have put me some grease fittings in them. I got one that'll crack. No, it'll crack good and it's, it's kind of smooth. I asked him about it. He said, anything mechanical? He said, Dean will pop once in a while. I said, it's not once in a while. It's almost constant. He said, well, don't walk as much. I said, well, I'll just keep walking till it wears out. And if you're living, I'll get you. Put me in that and then. All right. But the thing about it is, despite the cost, despite anything, but many are ignorant of God's plan, of God's salvation. They're ignorant of it. In Romans, in chapter number 10 and verse 4, what, what is he talking about here? In Romans, in chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. And boy, I have got to hurry. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is, Israel, that can be your place right here, all right, that you might be saved. For I bear record that they have the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They don't want to know the Word of God. That's what he's saying. He said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Look, how many has been below Lowe's junkyard lately? On Back Street, on Cherry Street. You seen the new church they're building right there? United City Church. It's, it, they're, they're going up with it right now. 
They've got another church right at uh, just stay on Cherry Street instead of going by Memorial Park where they sell chicken. Just go straight ahead. Out there on the left, they've got another church. They've got, it, got one out there. Every corner you turn has got a church on. What's he talking about? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness going about to establish their own righteousness. If they can't get along in one church, they'll go build them one. But long ago, man, Gene went and died. Man asked me to come and preach on a Sunday night. Went down there and I preached, and the man's wife was the treasurer. Uh, they wasn't a whole lot of coming. He took every dime of money they had and left. Took uh, as far as I know, he kept the church keys. I can take you to the church. Why can I take you to the church? Because they it sat there and it sat there and it sat there, and they give it to my brother. Church, land, and all. And if I told you who the preacher was, every one of you would know it. But the thing about it is, and going about to establish their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They just want to take a bunch with them. Just take a bunch with them. Whoever they can get out of any church, anywhere else, just take a bunch with them. Come on, we got a brand new church. We're starting a brand new way. We, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. A man stood last week, told us, we're, we're going to do, do this. We're going to build us a life church. We're going to build a life center first. We're going to have church in the life center. Then we're going to build a church because we want a place for it to put our young kids before we even get a church. All right? And verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Brother, you can't go by the law. You wasn't born. You didn't die by the law. Thank God I can't keep the law, but I've got a better way to go than by the law. I'm going by the grace of God. Brother, all right. Some are ignorant of their own sinfulness. They've got sins and they ain't confessing them. They think nobody don't know. Proverbs 30 and verse number 12. Proverbs 30 and 12. Listen to what the Word of God says if I can find it. 30 and 12. Here it is. All right now. Listen. He said, there is a generation... There is, not there could be, not there might be, but there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Now, boy, that's just about as plain as you can get. Amen. Amen. But you know what? A pig loves other pigs. You, you wash a pig, you clean him up. I don't care how clean you put him up. You turn him loose, he's going to jump in the first mud hole he comes to. And somebody out of the will of God, but a drunk loves another drunk. But buddy, God loves all of the drunks. And God will wash every one of them in the blood of the Lamb of God if the Holy Spirit of God will draw them. All right, but the thing about it is this. It's all, God's got an invitation to every one of them. In Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 24. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 24. And look what it said. I'll read three verses here, I believe. Because I have called and you have refused, I have stretched out mine hand and no man regarded, but you have said it not, all my counsel and would, would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your fear cometh. 
God said, I'll laugh at you because you've laughed at my son, because you've laughed at my child. All right, real quickly, the results of such neglect of so greater salvation, real quickly, Romans 2. Romans chapter number 2, and I'm going to be done here. I've got a couple more verses. Romans 2 and verse number 3 through 6. And the Bible says this. He says, And thankest thou this, O man, that judges them which do things and doest the same. The same. He said, How that thou shalt escape the judgment of God, or despisest thou the riches of the goodness and the forbearance and, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But if after thy hardness and impotent heart it treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the, the righteousness, the judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. You're going to, I, don't, I don't care. I, I hope God blesses every one of you. It's a million or five million dollars. But if you're unsaved, that's all the heaven you're going to get. You're getting all of your heaven right here. Right here. Enjoy what you got. Enjoy it real good. Love it. Go to the liquor store, buy all the liquor you can get. Go to, uh, go, to go buy all the beer you can drink. Because boy, I'll tell you what, you're going to a place where thirst will never be quenched. And the last thing in Hebrews 9, 27, and this is back to where we started. And what did he say? He said very plain over here. And it, God, God is so, I can quote it, but I'd rather read it. He said, for it is as it is appointed unto man wants to die, but after this the judgment. Salvation is the only thing that's going to stand between you and God. The blood is what's going to stand between you and God. I want the Lamb of God to be my lawyer. I want the Lamb of God to just, when I, they call my name, I don't know what it'll be. Don't care. But when I'm called, I just want, I'm going to be so ashamed. I just want to crawl up. And I'd love for Jesus just to step over here and say, Dean, stand up. Welcome home. Oh, Brother Fred. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. I don't, I don't believe I'll make it to my feet. I don't. I hope you'll just... I was thinking today, I just hope you'll let me grab him. Just touch his feet. Think about all them old dusty trails. He walked all over Jerusalem, Galilee, and Nazareth. And he said, Dan, they're not going to respect you. They're not going to love you if you stand on the Word of God. They're going to call you a hard preacher. They're going to call you, oh, they're going to call you all of this. But hey, they call me the same thing. They call me a lot worse. But the sad thing is, they never really called on me at all for what they could have had for you. They stand, Heavenly Father, and Almighty God, as we stand together tonight. God, we stand as one. Lord, I love these people. Lord, I love them with all my heart. God, I do. Lord, God, I love to just wrap them up. Lord, in one big bunch and reach around them all at one time. God, it seems like there's sickness and death in every family. And Lord, it seems like the devil is hitting, hitting your people and they're hitting them hard. And Lord, I believe it's because he don't have heart long to live. 
in this old world. He don't have long for his demons to go out from hell's door to work. His time is short. Lord, I believe with all of my soul. Lord, he's hitting them with all he's got. He's trying to break them. They're building churches. They're building that they call churches on every door because, Lord, the men that are building them and the women that are building them, Lord, they've never been saved. They've never been called by the Lamb of God to preach the Word. They're throwing your Word out the door. They're trampling it. They're tromping it under the feet. And Lord, you plainly told them to put the blood on the doorpost and on the lintel, but that was all. Lord, a man that walks over the blood of the Lamb of God, oh, death will come and death will come with fierce, oh, with fierceness like man has never seen. And in hell, Lord, the burning pit, oh God, it's going to be forever and ever. Oh Lord, so greater salvation. Such a loving God. Oh God, go home with us. And God, bring us back, Lord. Lord, on the Lord's day, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.